Am I hurting you? No, but it's a thought that counts, isn't it? It most certainly is. place if it's the last thing i ever do hi there terence mcguana welcome back to canon forever and today we're going to look at hanoi hilton from 1987 a group of american pow's held inside hanoi's Harlow prison during the vietnam war endure some brutal lessons in the art of survival and find dignity in the bargain. After all these years, this film Hanoi Hilton is one of the very few Vietnam War films that has completely escaped me. I, I would say that this film would probably work just as well as a stage play. You know, we've got a lot of great American actors in here. We've got Michael Moriarty, Paul Lamatt, David Soule and Jeffrey Jones, just to name a few, right? Obviously this film has an American slant, it's an American film, right? Although it's made by the Israeli cousins, Menahem Golan and Yoram Globus, right, are funding this. It is an American point of view of the Vietnam War, it is the, the soldier's story. Senator John McCain, the late Senator John McCain, he also uh, participated as an advisor on this film and gets credit at the very end of the movie. And uh, that, that encouraged me to do a little bit more research after watching the film and uh, into John McCain's story about him being a prisoner of war. It's pretty much beat for beat what happens in this film. Although you could accuse the film of bringing out the old prisoner of war movie cliches, they're, they're cliches for a reason, right? They're cliches for a reason because this is what actually happens in these circumstances. And the trouble with history is it has a habit of repeating itself. It's more of an intimate drama, this film. It's not a war film. You don't see any battle sequences or anything like that. We just get to be imprisoned with these men. Regardless what you may think about John McCain's political leanings, right? Or, you know, whatever political leanings you have, or political beliefs, or any issues such as that, you cannot deny that this man was a hero, right? When you, when you read into some of the absolutely atrocious torture that these men had to endure, or if you watch this film, this film is a pretty accurate portrayal of that. But yeah, you cannot deny that these men were absolute heroes to survive this, this trauma, right? To be held there for years and years and years, right? Trying to survive together and to endure this torture, right? And uh, the thing is as well, although this film has an American bias, any war film in the world has its own personal bias, whether it's an anti-war film or it's a pro-war film. And I always approach it with that. I always, I always ask myself, who is paying for this? Why is this film being made? What is the purpose of it? And this film is, ha, does have a pro-American bias in it. And at the same time, Although the uh, Americans are not allowed to torture prisoners of war, and neither are the Viet Cong, right? The, the, these, the, these lines seem to get blurred. From my research, what I understand that when the Americans were occupying South Vietnam, if they captured a Viet Cong prisoner, they would not torture them. They would not torture this person. What they would do is they would get the South Vietnamese army to do it for them, right? So it was a way of of washing their hands of any responsibility for that. And in this in this film they vehemently deny, the Viet Cong vehemently deny that they are committing these atro atrocities to these men, right? And there is a moment in it where one of the characters, these characters are used as propaganda pawns uh, against the Americans where they're being interviewed by the American press and they're there to show that they're being well cared for, everything's Everything is hunky-dory, and this is pretty accurate to what, what was happening at the time. And they're trying to reveal to the press that they're actually being tortured and so, sort of covertly trying to show, like, their wrist, that there's, you know, this is where there's all these rope burns and things like that. I would highly recommend Hanoi Hilton. I think this is an important film, especially in the past where people have criticised John McCain's credibility as an American hero. All you have to do is watch this film, right? This film pretty much depicts without glamorising it, without 
trying to overdo the torture or anything like that. It isn't about the torture, it's about the survival, it's about the heroism that these men had to stay together and to get through this, this nightmare, right? And if, if you have any doubts about uh, Senator John McCain being an American hero, then please watch this film, right? I was really taken by this actor, Aki Alion, who played Major Doc, the antagonist of the film, the, the evil warden, so to speak. As much as you would think he's an evil warden, right, in the sort of tradition of prison movies, he does have a lot of charm, a lot of charisma, this character. You do feel that you could negotiate with this guy, right, in the movie, but because they are so defiant, because they, the characters stick it to this person and they don't follow his, his leadership, uh, he just becomes very sadistic. This guy's got a, a really long career, right? He's been in he's been in films and television shows for over 60 years. He's made over 50 movies, 150 television shows. He, he had been in some TV shows that I recognise him from, such as Babylon 5. And the one that stuck out for me, right, and this is really cheesy, was V the series. Not the mini-series of V, right? The really good one. The really kind of rubbish one, the V series. Uh, which came later, he played Mr. Chang in V the series, who was like this kind of henchman for uh, Nathan Bates, that character in V the series, right? That was just, I, I just loved that, even though it was really cheesy and it went off the rails and became camp stupid, right? But yeah, that is exactly where I recognised him from, playing Mr. Chang in uh, V the series. But yeah, Aki Aliong, he's a great actor and he's still alive today. Absolutely brilliant. I would highly recommend Hanoi Hilton. I thought it was a very compelling prisoner of war film. And the more I read about it, about the real place that this was set and the men who actually survived this, I began to understand how truthful it was. There were, there were some other interesting aspects to this film. I loved the way that it brought some of the actual facts of the day throughout the 60s. Because this, this story goes on for goes on for about eight years, right? The, the Vietnam War lasted for ten years and these this, these character stories go on for a very long time. So a lot of incidents that happened in the late 1960s, such as the moon landing, the rise of the counterculture, these uh, this information sort of trickles down to these prisoners. They get to learn information about the outside world, about what's happening back in the United States since they've become prisoners. I really enjoyed the way that they did that. They, they, do, they don't overdo it. They don't actually just bombard you with trivia and knowledge about the counterculture or about the moon landing. You get that in very small pieces of information and I really enjoyed the way they did that. And uh, I, have to, I have to warn you as well. If you if you've got a real if you've got a real allergy against cheesy sort of rock ballads, at the very end of this film, without spoiling the ending to this film, it plays this almighty cheesy rock ballad. Right, I can't remember who sang it or how the song goes, or I'd sing it for you. But I, I found that kind of took me out of the movie in a big way. I know that they're trying to sort of. Uh, they're trying to promote these characters as heroes surviving this war, but I just found this song really grating, right? That's about the only criticism I have of this film. I thought Hanoi Hilton was terrific, and I would highly recommend it. Now, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the subscription button. I'm Terence Maguana. I'll be back very soon with another video about canon. Hope you have a terrific day. Cheerio, bye.